Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and this is the continuation of my Zodiac series. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. But today we are talking about Pisces and we are talking about the colours associated with that star sign. So, if you want to know a little bit more about the colour spectrum associated with Pisces, then my friends, you have the best seat in the house. As I have said for some time now and oft hear echoed in other shall we say less imaginative channels grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy because here it comes hey lovelies welcome back from the intro you will have seen in the intro, that this is another one of my zodiac series, and we are now on Pisces. Uh, I will put the color spectrum associated with Pisces just here oh, while I talk about it. Just here, uh, Pisces covers February 19th to March 20th. And uh, as you can see, the colour spectrum ranges from a mid down to a pastel green, teal, and then uh, like a, a lavender, a violet, and a lilac. You've got royal blue going right the way through the blues down to a pastel. Then you've got um, almost, almost like a... Um, an even lighter lilac then a sort of like a pearly grey and then a white so um, on some screens that grey may look beige depends on your colour output but the colours that are attracting me today are numbers four and five if you count from the left to the right which are the teals so, I have grabbed my electric turquoise out, which was a gift from my lovely friend Kay, because it has these three gorgeous turquoisey tealy shades in. Um, and I may pull in this silver for the white at the end. So, that's the plan for today. Um, as always, this is a teaching channel. That combined with the fact that I have chronic pain, um, I do not blend as quickly as most people do. If this is a problem for you, up there is a speed widget. <laughs> Feel free to use it. Um, I've spoken for some time now in my films about the differences between hooded lids and deep set eyes because initially when I first started getting properly into makeup which was probably 20, 2010, 2011-ish I really started to get into makeup rather than just smoky eye, red lip, out the door <laughs> my look was smoky eye, wing liner, red lip, out the door, that was it um, and concealer on dark circles and anything. I didn't bother with blush, I didn't bother with bronzer, I didn't bother with foundation. 
I led a very simple makeup life. Looking at the amount of makeup I have now, looking back to then, when it all fitted in a bag about this size, yeah, not now. Definitely not now. Um, I used to think I had hooded lids. And I'd follow hooded lid tutorials and think, why is my eyeshadow not looking as good as theirs? And I thought it was skill level, which it probably could have been back then as well. But in one of my insomniac moments, began researching different eye shapes, mainly so that when I'm doing my tutorials, I can give you advice if you've got a different type of eye from myself. And that was the point that I realised I actually have deep set eyes, not hooded lids. Both types of eye have very similar issues in terms of eyeshadow application and wear and transfer. But they are very different and they do have very different workarounds. So I've made a point since then of referencing in my tutorials the difference between both types of eye, how to work out which you have and the workarounds for each eye type. Now I haven't broken lockdown, I haven't been to a salon, I actually did these myself. These are not press on nails. Hubby bought me tips and acrylic and monomer and I had a go at doing them myself. If you don't get too close, they don't look too bad. Uh, they're not that bad close up, not for a first effort for someone who's never had any nail training. Although for someone who's been having their nails done for 10 years, I guess I should have picked up a trick or two somewhere. Um, right, in just a minute I'll insert the clip. For those of you who've not watched me before, I get very, very close up. When I say I zoom in, I don't do like most people where I zoom in so you can still see all the head and the decolletage. I zoom in so it's just my eyes so you can absolutely see what I'm talking about. You can clearly see whether you're watching on a phone or a tablet or a computer or a, a TV. If you stream it to the TV it's going to be very up close and personal. <laughs> I have got some friends who do that. In fact, Shia LaWoof if you're watching, hello darling. My mate's dog uh, watches my tutorials. Apparently he likes my voice. Who knew? Officially the dog whisperer. Or a bitch. Whichever you prefer. Right, so yeah, very up close and personal. So uh, here comes the clip and when it's finished I'll be back to apply some of this to these. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it, but if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms 
as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey lovelies and I am back again. Right, looking particularly tired today. Struggled a lot last night in terms of sleeping and of course with hubby being an essential worker he still gets up at half four each morning which means I get up at half four each morning. Mind you I'm usually awake before the alarm goes off anyway. Right this is believe it or not it's actually a boohoo brush. It is clean it's just stained because um, I've done like the quick. During the week I use um, a spray brush, brush cleaner, that's difficult to say, brush cleaner um, and I wipe them off on a microfiber cloth so it gets any bacteria and everything off of them but if there's any staining on the brush that doesn't come out until I do my weekly wash so yeah. So I'm going to start off with Let's go into force field, which is the lighter of the matte turquoises or teals. Turquoise and teal are very similar um, in terms of shades. Some people say that teal is more green than blue and turquoise is more blue than green, but they're pretty much swappable, really. Right, hold the brush right at the very end so you put as little pressure on it as possible. And then we're going to do what I refer to as the Viennese Waltz of Blending. So we're going to do circular movements, this direction going towards the nose, do a bounce in the middle, and this direction coming back. Which in terms of the Viennese Waltz, trust me, this makes sense. Natural turn, fleckle, reverse turn. Trust me, that will stick in your head. The reason I do this is I'm 46 years old, over the last few years I've lost 14 stone, which is 200 plus pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing the circular movement we're very gently moving the skin without stretching it so that we don't get the barcoding or the tiger striping effect, which is a dead giveaway for your age, which you can get when you do just the windscreen wiper movements. 
I do sometimes utilise the windscreen wiper, but initially the Viennese walks much, much better. And I always tap off and build the colour up rather than put too much on in the first place and then find it difficult to blend out. gone for quite a tight um, blending brush today rather than a blown out one because I, I kind of, although I want the edges blown out, I want to keep them as vibrant as possible, which obviously with a smaller, whatever the width of the head is on the brush, that's pretty much how far it will blend out. Um, this is the Kaleidos palette, for those of you who are wondering. My lovely friend Kay got this for me because she knew I had the other four. And was just missing this one. So she treated me to it. She's, she's my fairy godmother when it comes to makeup. She really is, bless her. She sent me so many bits and pieces that either she's bought and couldn't get on with. And in Europe we don't get the choice of taking them back. Once you've opened them, that's it, it's yours. You know, so she's she sent me quite a few bits and pieces that she either couldn't get on with or you know, was decluttering and which I love. I mean I've I've got some beautiful makeup from her. She actually sent me the um those of you who are regular viewers will know that I love the Blush Tribe Hasina 2 palette palette and Certify, which is the sister brand because it's literally run by her sister did a matching loose glitter set and Kay bought herself the glitter set but then found she couldn't get on with loose glitter so I sent it to me and I'm like oh my god that's amazing so you can see this this Kaleidos blends out beautifully I will talk a wee bit about some of the Piscean traits at the end of this film. But I like to keep the tutorial about the makeup so that if you're not someone who's interested in the astrological element that has inspired the look, you can just enjoy the tutorial itself. Now don't cut anything out in terms of the blending or the application because it gives you a better idea then of how long it's actually going to take you to recreate the look um, and you can also see how well a palette blends or not and as you can see this has blended out really really beautifully it's a very summery colour I think I um, my bridesmaids were in teal, but a, a deeper shade of teal, more of a greeny teal, um, which went, went perfectly with my purple wedding dress. Just cleaning this brush off on a microfiber cloth. I used to use a colour switch, but they're far too harsh on the bristles of your brush. Right, I'm now going to go into a digital which is the deep matte and I'm going to use this brush now this is a I call them a pointed crease I don't know whether they are actually called that if you compare it to the size of a uh, pencil brush though, it gives you an idea of the kind of size we're talking about <laughs> funnily enough the colour I'm about to use is pretty much the same colour as the tip of this brush And make it nice and easy to see how much pigment you've got on their end. Well done. Really well thought out. Right, and I'm going to do into my natural crease. So if you've moved yours, now's the time to follow the line you've put down. Just gentle little circles using the very tip of the brush. I don't want it to go too far up the eye. 
I'm really liking that teal. I love these Kaleidos palettes. Um, the sci-fi green is my favourite. And because of that, I feel like I don't need the Melt Gemini, which is significantly more expensive. What I am gutted about though is I've been trying to save up because I really want the Moerte palette. And uh, I saw on Melt's Instagram that apparently Moerte is not coming back. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm not happy about that at all, I tell you. So I'm going to have to try and dupe it, I think. At least now I can do the teals from this palette. I'm going to pop a little bit on the inner corner here because I feel like doing a bit of a halo eye today. And then some on the outer edge of my mobile lid. Just like so. <laughs> like this. Like this a lot. This is a really summery, spring-like... Isn't it a pity we're stuck in lockdown because this would look great at a barbecue. Look. Now with this eye, I have the super deep creasing just here from where my eye was pulled around at five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. I'm trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly with it. That's obviously before I lost the sight in it. Which didn't happen until I was about 13. But um, I do have to be very careful with this one because the issue that I get is that um, I actually have to stretch the lid out, which I hate doing. And I never ever advise anybody to do this unless you're in a position like I am. Because if I don't do this, when I'm applying pigment to the inner corner here, what happens is instead of the pigment being blended onto the eyelid, it ends up packing loosely into the crease. And then I end up with it sort of cascading into my eye and down my face during the day and it can be super super painful when it gets in your eye um, but you saw then I only pulled out the lid that was having the issue on it I only pulled it out as far as it needed to go Just all wipe with my cellar water on because that will fidget me in editing if I don't deal with it. Um, and as soon as I'd finished, I let go. So I don't stretch the eye out any more than I have to. I always get more fallout this side though because the skin on this eye is looser because of the damage it sustained 41 years ago. So, do not pull your eyelid around, people. See people go and put it out really tight to do their winged liner. No, please don't. I've got a tutorial on doing winged liner where you don't have to pull your eye out at all, but still get beautiful wing. Right, clean that brush. And now this is a basically a cheap one from a set that I got on AliExpress. And it's just a it's a lip brush. And I'm going to use my Revolution Caffeine Spray to wet the pigment after I've applied it to the brush because, say it with me long term viewers, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. Right, I'm going to go into Tron, which is the teal shimmer in this palette. A lot of people are put off by the orange in here. 
Don't be. Orange is opposite teal on the colour spectrum, so they work perfectly together. So, packed pigment on both sides. I'm now going to wet that brush. And now I'm going to dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is tuck it into your knuckle and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening your bristles because then you won't have a brush, you'll have a stick. Right, and I'm going to pop this on the inner edge there and the outer edge such a pretty colour. Isn't that stunning? Doesn't it just make you think of some kind of tropical fish darting through Mediterranean waters? And yes, I wish I was on a beach somewhere with a cocktail in one hand and a good book in the other. Well, that being said, me and heat don't get on well. I go from white to lobster and then back to white again. So I'd probably be under a sunshade, covered in factor 50. Only time I ever managed to tan was in Italy. Which is a completely different type of heat. And obviously at the moment, very, very very no goable and yes that is not a phrase but I've turned it into one anyway drop the ferrule off and again just going to stretch this out ever so gently to pop this on here And then letting go. And then again here. The halo eye is a really, really good way um, of making people look you in the eye. Because where the bit that corresponds with your pupil is the lightest part of the eye, your eye is naturally drawn to that part of the eye. So if you're like me where you have a problem that people are constantly staring at your cleavage, although to be fair, if I've got my cleavage out, I want it stared at. I never understand women who wear low cut tops and then moan when men ogle them. Well, if you don't want them staring at your boobs, love, don't get them out. It's that simple. You know, if you're gonna put things on display in the shop window, you've got to expect people to stop and look at them. Admittedly, you're not allowed to touch it without your permission. But don't mind their looking if you've put them out on display. That bugs me with women nowadays. You're staring at my bones. Well, you've got a top on that's cut down to your navel and you look like you're about to start breastfeeding. Sorry, just a pet peeve of mine. And then I've Put some shockwave on here, which is the, the silver, which obviously corresponds to the white at the other end of the colour spectrum for Pisces. My mother in law's a Pisces. Just thought I'd throw that into the mix. Brother in law's an Aquarius. Hubby's a Virgo. Right, I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to blend where those two shimmers meet. Just to blend. I don't mind having a harsher line where it's meeting the, um, the matte, but I want it blended on the shimmer. In between going back in, you probably notice that I've actually been drying the brush off. I hadn't said that I'd dried the brush off, but you can probably work out that I have been. I love the smell of this caffeine spray. I just wish it smelled more like coffee. 
Can you imagine that? A setting spray that smelled like coffee. Ooh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I've got mango juice in my, in my, um, in my skull. Ooh, I wonder why that was rattling around with little plastic oogie my flips come out. There's a plastic oogie my flip that holds the store in place. Let's come out. I might. I'm sure it will turn up. Can't have gone far. And then again, tip of the bristles to just blend those together. There. That's nice. I really like that. Hmm. You know, if you're doing an Elsa dress up, this could work, couldn't it? Oh, if anybody sings, let it go at me. I'm going to slap them. Right, I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation and some other base products on and I will be back to finish this eye look. Now, I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you, but for you, my darlings, it'll be absolutely instant. I'm back. As you can see, I have got teal brows. Now, um, I used to use pomades for this, but then Revolution stopped selling their coloured pomades and there were a lot that I hadn't got. So, what I do now is I use the soap brow trick. Um, I picked up the Rev kit just because it's easier because they've got a lot, like a little mini toothbrush shaped brush for but you don't need to do that, you can just use a bar of soap and a spoolie off the end of your brow thing and then you use your brow brush dip it into whatever shade you want to use and while the soap, because I, I put the soap on dry rather than wetting it because if you wet it it can go a bit crunchy and it can leave you like a white residue And then I just dip the brow end of the brow spoolie brush into whichever shade I wish. And in this case, obviously, I'm using Digi Teal, the same shade I used here. And just brush it through until you've got the desired depth of shade that you want across the brow. Voila, your brows automatically match whatever your look is. And you haven't got to cart around a pomade and you haven't got to try and find a pomade that'll match. Right, getting this flat top brush going into Digiteal. Regular viewers will know I don't tend to put anything on my waterline because I've always had very very sensitive eyes, very watery eyes. Um, my fibro makes that worse and then pollen on top of that at the moment it's just bad news all round but by going underneath your lash line and emphasising this instead you can still get the same effect of opening the eye up And finishing the look off. I always flinch this side because obviously I have no peripheral vision and the viewfinder is quite a long way away when you haven't got a contact lens or your glasses on and uh, I'm kind of relying on muscle memory to not poke myself in the eyeball. Regular viewers will know how often that happens. And this is my favourite smudger brush. It's actually the brush that came with the Tarte Swamp Queen Graveyard Girl palette. But I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky. But you can use a smudger brush, you can use 
a densely packed blender like this. Um, I mean, to a certain extent, you can even use like one of those um, foam-tipped ones that we all throw away. Don't throw those away, by the way. They are great for applying uh, pressed glitters. Right, I'm going to dip this into force field. I'm just going to use this to buff the lower lash line out. How's your day been? I hope it's been a good one, or if it's the start of your day, I hope it's going to be a good one. And if it's been a pretty shit day, well, I hope tomorrow's better for you. Hmm, I like that. weird how the teal actually brings out the green in my eyes, makes them look more green than before. Right, because Anastasia have now re-released it, I can start dipping into my Nicole Guerrero glow kit again. You can see I got a hecking dip on this one, and this one, and this one. This one I mix with this one, in case you were wondering. Right, this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay a decade ago, probably. I'm going to Forever Lit. Apply that to the inner corner. And then I like to bring mine along under my tear duct and just blend it in with whatever colour I've run under my eye because I think that finishes the eye look off nicely. You don't have to do that, you can just do your inner corner like that but you can see hopefully anyway you can see the difference I just think it finishes my eye shape off nicely but it's your face you paint it how you want it to look and I'm going to go into Forever Young which is the one that has got the biggest dip in it I'm going to pop that just up under the tail of my brow because apparently folks our brows like everything else are subject to gravity and uh, um, <laughs> sag as we get older isn't that wonderful and just adding a bit of brightness under the tail just lifts the brow up and gives you a more youthful countenance apparently I don't know if it works or not but it's shiny and it's pretty and I like it. So, there. <laughs> right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some more highlight on my face, put some mascara on, do something with my hair and put a lippy on. And I'll be back with my finished look and a bit of more information about Pisces. I am back. Uh, I kind of went a little bit ham with the highlighter, but when don't I? This is Forever Young with Forever Lit just on the highest point of my cheek. Hair is doing its own thing again. Uh, mascara is my little mini It Superhero Mascara. Lippy is the, uh, I think this is the Revolution Pro line. Uh, but it's the matte lipstick in Teddy. Not to be confused with Max Velvet Teddy, which I also have. Right, so this is my finished look for Pisces. There's the colour chart again. Obviously, I went for the teal element from it. What do you think? Do you like? Do you not like? Would you do it yourself? If you were doing this, Especially if you're a Pisces, which colours would you have been drawn to? Which colours call you most out of that colour spectrum? In fact, after you've given this film a like, cheeky cheeky hopeful, um, can you in the comments section let me know A, what your star sign is and B, which of those colours calls to you? If you were doing this, which of those colours would you call, would you use? 
because I'm nosy and I want to know more about you, basically. Hmm. My book of planning and secrets and I'm pretty sure there's a few channels I'd like to get their hands on this and see what I've got planned but no such luck <laughs> right so I've already said Pisces are February 19th to March 20th and three traits of a Pisces are compassionate intuitive and sensitive which is why you find a lot of people in the caring profession are Pisces and I mentioned earlier that my mother-in-law is a Pisces and she is a nurse so I guess that actually works out doesn't it don't get me wrong I don't sort of read my horoscope and think it's written for me in fact half the time I don't read my horoscopes full stop but I do believe that there are certain traits and certain personality elements which do tend to fit the different signs regardless of and obviously I'm aware that the stars move around you know we're moving around the stars it's in completely different places depending on what time of year and which year you were born what time of year if you're a Pisces it's always going to be the same bloody time of year for goodness sake woman <sighs> however my bright brain is hit. Um, I do believe that there are you can you can recognise certain elements like the compassion, like the intuitiveness, um, which do tend to fit most Pisces. So I hope you found this helpful, fun, maybe even a little bit informative. Uh, if not I hope you enjoyed seeing this eyeshadow palette getting a workout. If you're one of my 4F beauties, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people and yet cheekily leaving me in your news feed so it's not obvious that you've been unsubscribed. For example, this week, Tuesday, put a film up. Within three hours, lost a subscriber. Thursday, Put a film up within three hours. Lost a subscriber. Today is Saturday. It is currently quarter to nine in the morning. At midday, a film goes up. Let's see if I lose another subscriber by three o'clock today. Hmm? 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 <laughs> yes, they do eventually come back, but it is still bloody frustrating. So please check you are still subscribed. Um, and if you have them rung, please check your notifications are still active. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something about this mad bird that you quite enjoyed listening to or watching. Uh, that being the case, it would be absolutely bloody awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family, because we are the nicest family on YouTube. It's super easy to do. You hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, ring my bell and then say yes however many times YouTube are currently asking you to say yes so that you get all notifications. And despite choosing all notifications, they'll probably tell you about one in four of my new films that go up. Speaking of which, I have an awful lot of other films that you can watch. Uh, so basically, pick a playlist and as I've said for some time now, but seem to be hearing echoed in many other places. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge. Right, my lovelies, that's about it for me for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.